what's up guys? Welcome to Off The Grid Wall. I'm Dan. Hey, I'm Mike. So summer is still going strong and I don't know about you, but one of my favorite things about summer is that I get to watch Wipeout on ABC. Yeah, I love that show. Did you know that Wipeout is really similar to the Japanese game show Takeshi's Castle? Oh, you mean this show? Vicky Sue Gonzalez, a turkey jerker from Jackson Hole. Oh! Ah, I was screaming for dramatic effect. Well, I was moved by it. And here you are, ready to take on the spirited young fellow is Abanche, much sought after fashion photographer. Indeed, and look at Bert go. Looks like, oh! oh! And next, here's Officer Mack. He's a desk sergeant who just about everybody agrees is a good cop. Ooh! He teaches balloon puppetry to self-abusers. Yeah. Oh, no. Teaches flamboyant shuffling techniques to dull blackjack dealers. And... All right, man, that looks really painful. Well, some game shows are usually built upon the pain and suffering of the contestants. Of all the ones I've seen, Japanese game shows are the craziest, and their prank shows take it, like, pretty far. I mean, really far. So far that distance doesn't even exist. So today, we're bringing you the craziest, craziest Japanese pranks and game shows. Okay, this is insane. I mean, who thought of this? Yeah, it's like some producer was like, hey, you know what would be really funny? Let's hire a hundred people and make them run at some random strange dude. Well, let's be honest, it is kind of funny. And then imagine these people, like this happens to them and then they go on living their lives. Like how would they even tell this story? Yeah, so today a hundred people came running at me and then people would be like, oh my God, then what happened? Uh, nothing, and they just left, like, left. <laughs> Number two, dude, I love this one. Sticky floor prank. So the lesson here is don't walk down random alleys, kids. Yeah, and like this guy who fell completely into this sticky thing, I mean, is he all right? I mean, did he get out okay? Yeah, they didn't show them getting out. Maybe he's still stuck there. Ooh, the ghost of the sticky floor stuck guy. It's not just random alleyways though. Elevators are dangerous places too. Yo, they are so dangerous. Hi. <laughs> You know how I feel, Dan? It's like, you're not safe anywhere in Japan. No, you're not safe anywhere. Definitely not from pranks. And if you saw our Urban Legends video, click here, you're not safe from evil spirits either. And you're definitely not safe from dinosaurs. Which brings us to number four, the dinosaur prank. <laughs>
Okay, I don't know if I agree with the hiding behind a plant strategy from dinosaurs, really. No, I don't agree. Have you seen Jurassic Park? You gotta just hide and stand still. Well, I don't agree with that because you gotta run. But the key is, all you gotta do is run faster than one other person. Yeah, dude, like, it, it, dinosaur's definitely getting you if it's chasing both of what? us. What? Yeah, bro. Yo, and you, you got are dinosaur food. You got more meat than me. That means I got more strength in my legs. Yeah, more meat for the dinosaur to chew. Come on, dude. <laughs> Speaking of oversized lizards, have you seen the one where the Komodo dragon chases a woman? Okay, now this is just getting mean. First of all, what's up with the eyebrows and no shoes? Also, kimono dragons run pretty fast, like 11 miles per hour. And a woman in a kimono with no shoes probably averages, what, three? And who the heck would want to be on a game show like this? Really getting chased by a kimono dragon? I don't know, man. It seems like these Japanese shows love instilling fear in their participants. And of course, people like to watch it. Kind of like the show Duro. If I were a contestant, I'd be constantly afraid of falling or getting squashed. Now the show consists of three separate games. So the first game forces the contestants to go on a beam as the floor below them retracts into the wall. The contestants then answer riddles. Of course, that's what you do. The more time you take to answer, the shorter your beam gets. If you manage to answer all of the riddles in time, you get to escape. But if you take too long, you will fall into the darkness. The next game has three contestants lie on a floor that starts off slightly open. Every time a question is answered incorrectly, the opening will widen. Eventually, if the contestant fails enough times, he or she will again fall into the darkness. The only way to escape is to answer enough questions correctly and to not fall through. Unfortunately, this time no one succeeds. <laughs> Suckers. In the last game, three contestants are locked in a room and chained to the walls. The floor slowly rises, and they must solve, you guessed it, a series of riddles to escape. Each riddle leads to another riddle or the location of the key. After solving all the riddles, one of the three contestants are then able to climb through an air duct to push the release button. If the climber takes too long, the floor will rise to its limit, and they lose. You know what? I take back my comment about being scared. This actually sounds kind of fun. Yeah, if you find this fun, you know there's actually a new continuation of this show. Tore! The name of this show has now been changed to Tore and has the same layout as the old one, except with new games and ideas. One particular game has a contestant answer a question while he or she is being wrapped by bandages. Right, and if you don't answer the full question by the time you are completely mummified from your toes to your head, you lose. You know, I wonder if people can actually breathe like that? I don't know, but I sure hope that they have good safety precautions. What's the next show? The next show is candy or not candy. The contestants must choose one item from the room that they believe is candy. He or she will then bite the item to see if it's candy or not. That one's pretty much self-explanatory. Wow, they're so well made. I almost thought they were actually shoes. You know, after this game show, these people will just go home and start randomly biting stuff. <laughs> yeah, hoping you know? it's like chocolate. Moving on, we continue to the team. In this show, the two teams will dance on a platform and when the music stops, they are bombarded with volleyballs, of course. Of course, there's always a platform, then decreases in size every round, eventually getting so small that they can barely move. And once someone falls, his or her team will lose. This sounds like extreme dodgeball. Yeah. I would be so good at this game. I'm like the dodgeball ninja. Everyone used to gang up on me because I was so good. Yeah, maybe they gang up on you because you called yourself the dodgeball ninja. Because <laughs> I was. Whatever. Anyway, we used to play dodgeball with basketball. Now, that hurts. Yeah, dude. That's how a real man plays dodgeball. Speaking of pain, this last show may top the pain chart. And fittingly, it's called Electric Shock Russian Roulette. Okay, this one is super whack. The contestants in this show have two patches on their shoulders. 
They're connected to a power cord that has to be plugged into an outlet on the wall. Like the game Russian Roulette, you don't know which outlet actually works. And you are safe as long as you don't get shot. Yeah, look, I mean, how happy they are when they're safe. <laughs> and then you get shot and not so happy. Duh. You know what's really mean is that these people try to unplug themselves from being shot and everyone else is keeping the plug in. Yeah, this is like mob mentality right there. You know, it reminds me of those people with uh, gag pins and they're like, Hey, can you write down your contact info? Then, <laughs> oh dude, I got shot by those. <laughs> ah, yeah, oh, I can see you falling for that. So I don't live in Japan. Uh, do everybody there really get a kick out of people suffering? Yeah, I mean, these shows I really like and laugh at. But like the American shows like Fear Factor, I can't watch those. Oh, you know what? Can. Chinese people would dominate Fear Factor. Yes. Here's what. Okay, I was watching Fear Factor with some of my Chinese friends. Yeah. And uh, you know how you know how they have to eat some Ball quote test. unquote disgusting stuff. Yeah, like bull's like, uh, testicles. Or like you know cow stomach yeah. and like uh, the half fertilized egg thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my Chinese friends were all like, Yo, "That's delicious." That's delicious. Dude, true story. True if you story, have true story. Chinese people on Fear Factor, we would dominate Fear Dude. Factor. We're not afraid of eating anything. Dude, they'd be like, oh, lie in this tub of cockroaches. And they'd be like, yeah, I grew up with cockroaches. Bam, bam. And like, they win. They dominate. Fried cockroaches? Seriously. They're like, ooh, this one looks pretty good. <laughs> oh, oh, that's nasty. You know what's, what uh, I kind of have a question about? Like, how does none of these victims sue the heck Seriously. out of these TV networks? Dude, they, they sign a waiver. Like, I've, Dude, I saw a show. Okay, no, no, no. Some of these shows, prank shows. Oh, I saw yeah. a show. Uh, we didn't put it here for you guys because there's some nudity in it. I saw a show where it was a ski resort, mm -hmm. and they shot the guy out of a ski resort spa right, right. on a on a on a massage couch down that, a dude. mountain, and naked. Yeah, that's messed up. That and you're talking about the clip where he sits down in a chair. Yeah, he's on, he's in a massage chair, and they jet propels the massage chair down a mountain. <laughs> That's not the best that's, time, man. How do you get Dude, away with that? If that happened in America, man, that's why they don't have these this in America, because everybody was sued. Yeah. Anyways, guys, make sure you like us on Facebook, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you later. Thanks, guys.